Hello everyone. Welcome to the Autodesk University talk, working with Forge from Visual Studio Code. My name is Peter Bross. I'm a Forge developer advocate. And in this role, one of my responsibilities is providing tools for developers to make their work with the platform as easy as possible. And in this talk, I'm excited to share with you one of our latest tools that I believe will make your work with the Autodesk Forge platform more efficient and much more fun. First of all, let's talk about how we arrived to this point. As you probably know, there are many different ways one can communicate with the Forge platform. The most common workflow is using one of the many Forge SDKs for different programming languages in your custom code, or perhaps going lower level and communicating with the Forge RESTful APIs using raw HTTP requests. You can also leverage one of the third-party HTTP clients. For example, the command line clients such as wget or curl, or the GUI-based clients such as Postman or Insomnia. You can also leverage one of the existing Forge applications, such as the OSS Manager implemented by our team, where you can simply supply your own Forge applications credentials and access the platform services and content from there. Personally, I've gone through all of these layers of usage, and after a while, they all seemed a bit too manual. And I started wondering, isn't there a better way to get a really quick access to the platform for testing, quickly checking its, its capabilities and features. At that time, I had already been a long time user and a big fan of Visual Studio Code. For those of you who may not know, Visual Studio Code is a lightweight code editor, pretty much a small brother of Microsoft's Visual Studio that's really well suited for web development. The editor itself is actually built using modern web technologies like Electron. And as it turns out, Visual Studio Code is also very nicely extensible. And with that, we present to you Autodesk Forge Tools. Autodesk Forge Tools is a free Visual Studio Code extension available on the Visual Studio Marketplace with its implementation in TypeScript also available to the public on GitHub. The extension was first released back in June 2019, and since then we've gathered almost 2,000 unique installs and around 9,000 total downloads. The extension provides a customized sidebar in the editor that gives you access to all sorts of functionality and content in the Autodesk Forge platform. For example, with the data management service, you get access to your object simple storage content. You can create and delete buckets, upload objects, download them, delete them, rename them. You can leverage the resumable upload functionality provided by the platform as well, create signed URLs, etc. You can also tap into the model derivative service. With your objects available in OSS, you can start translation jobs for these. You can check the status of the translation and preview all the outputs extracted by the service, information such as property database, object trees, thumbnails, etc. You can also leverage the power of the Forge Design Automation Service, managing ad bundles, creating, modifying activities using a simple form UI, and even triggering individual work items and checking their results all from within the editor. The extension includes other features such as management of Forge webhooks, and experimental access to hubs. So now you can preview your data not only in OSS, but also your content in products such as BIM 360 or Fusion Teams. My favorite feature of the extension, however, is the previewing. Since Visual Studio Code API allows us to create new tabs with custom web views inside, we are able to instantiate Forge Viewer right inside Visual Studio Code 
and let it preview your 2D and 3D designs extracted by the model derivative service without leaving the editor. The extension can be configured as any other extension inside Visual Studio Code. You can specify a scope for your settings. For example, user scope means the settings will be applied to every instance of Visual Studio Code that you open on your system. And the workspace scope you can use to provide settings that only apply for a specific project and folder on your system. The Autodesk Forge Tools extension contains a couple of con config options, such as a list of extensions to be loaded by a Forge viewer when previewing your designs, the default file size when uploading files to Forge with the resumable functionality in chunks. But the most important configuration is the list of environments. An environment is basically a definition of a Forge application with its credentials clan ID and clan secret, and a geo region where you want to work with your data. Don't worry if this all seems a bit too complicated to you. When you activate the extension for the first time, it checks for the environment configuration. And if there are no environments configured, it'll start a simple wizard that'll help you set things up. And with that, let's try a little demo. All right, we have our Visual Studio Code window open here. And you can see I already have my Autodesk Forge Tools extension installed. If you don't have it yet, simply navigate to the extensions sidebar and look for Autodesk Forge. You'll see our extension with the Forge logo at the top, and you can install it from here. Just a small note, on some platforms, you may be asked to reload Visual Studio Code in order for this extension to be activated. Once your extension is available, let's try and activate it. And you can see, since this is our first time running the extension, we don't have any environments configured, we're now being asked to provide Forge credentials. Let's do that we're being asked to enter the Forge client ID and client secret. I already have my testing Forge application here, so I'm just gonna copy the client ID and paste it here. And I'm gonna copy the client secret and paste it here as well. I choose the default geo and give my environment a name. Since you can have multiple environments configured, it's good to give them some short descriptive names so that you can easily identify and switch between them later on. I'm gonna call my environment my M. And that's it. Our extension is now configured. And as you can see, we're already retrieving information from the Forge platform. Looking at the first section of our sidebar, buckets and derivatives, you can see that I already have a bucket created with these Forge credentials. I can expand it. I see that there is no data for now. Most of the functionality of the extension is accessed through right-click context menus. For example, if I right-click on the bucket itself, you see I have a couple of options here. I can get additional details about the bucket itself. I can delete all objects or in the bucket or the bucket itself, or I can upload an object. Let's try that now. Let me choose one of my sample files. For example, a drive shaft. Choose the name that the object should have inside Forge. And that's it. Now our file is being uploaded and the upload has completed. Note that the upload is resumable by default. So if I decide to cancel the upload halfway through or if my internet connection drops, I can always go back and resume the upload later on simply by uploading the file with the same name to the same bucket. Now, if I try and expand our DWG file, you will see that 
we get a hint notifying us that there are no derivatives yet available for this design. That's because we have not yet extracted any information from this design file using the model derivative service. Let's do that now. We can right click our design file. And again, you can see we have many options, many actions we can take from here. What we're interested in is translating the object. Let's do that now. This basically triggers a new model derivative service job that will extract all sorts of information from our DWG file. As you can see, this was pretty quick. The model derivative service was able to extract two viewables from our DWG file, a 2D view and a layout one. We can again try right-clicking one of these viewables to see all the information, all the actions we have available there. We can preview the derivative where we can instantiate Forge Viewer right inside a new tab inside Visual Studio Code and preview our model right there. We can also ask for information about all the properties, if there are any for this spe specific viewable. This will make a request to the model derivative service again and give us a JSON with all the properties, as you can see here. Now let's take a quick look at some of the other segments of this sidebar. Starting from the bottom, design automation. As you can see here, we have four categories, owned app bundles, shared app bundles, owned activities, and shared activities. You can see that we'll have access to some of the existing app bundles and activities that were provided by the design automation team. We can once again try and right click one of these and see the information that's available. In this case, we, we can ask for more details about this specific app bundle. Similarly, for shared activities, we can right click and choose view activity details to get access to more information about this specific design automation activity. And as you can see, we have a simple form user interface giving us information about everything about this activity, including the input and output parameters. In the same way, we could start a work item right from here, showing us a another simple form user interface where we can provide the actual URLs for inputs and outputs required by the specific activity. The webhook section allows us to manage our Forge webhooks. We have several different categories of event types and we can start creating webhooks, for example, for whenever a new version of a document is created in BIM 360 or in Fusion Team. And finally, the experimental hubs and derivatives section in the sidebar. This one, in order to be able to access our content in BIM 360 or Fusion Teams, will require a three-legged authentication. This is an advanced feature that will be explained separately in a blog post. All right, that's it for our demo. If you're interested about learning more about the extension, we will provide a couple of links to additional resources. Also, if you have any questions, bugs you would like to report, or feature requests, please let us know. You can contact us on GitHub, on the actual GitHub repository of this extension. You can contact us on Twitter or via email. Thank you very much for your attention.